this is a, a pretty old growth, looks like juniper tree we're looking at here, and it's right in the fence line. So we had to do something um, to have the fence run next to the tree without it, the wire and of the other part of the structure of the fence uh, doing damage to the tree. You can explain how that's been set up here. We're ac actually utilizing the tree as part of uh, the, the structure of the fence. And they're stretching off of it, using it for an end panel. Um, and that's something that's been done in this kind of country for years. These junipers are pretty hardy. Uh, they'll be here long after a lot of these uh, posts that we'd put in the ground would be here. Uh, we take a few extra precautions because if you wrap wire around a tree, eventually it grows uh, around it and it'll girdle the tree and kill it. So we don't want to kill the tree that's actually providing structure for our fence. Uh, so we, we use some of the limbs, they had to trim a few of the limbs uh, to use it, and they use the limbs around the tree to keep the wire from digging into the tree. And uh, then, so then it won't girdle it. This particular tree was used, there was a, in the fence before this fence, and we, we tore out an old fence and we're putting in a new fence, and you can still see where they used this before, and it was girdling that tree. Mm -hmm. So they got the wire out and uh, put the structure in, and hopefully that'll uh, be there for a long time. Mm -hmm. Anytime you're in this country like this where it's real brushy, it presents a challenge to just get the fence through. Um, I mean, in this particular instance, since this is a wilderness, we just uh, allowed them to clear a minimum amount to be able to get the fence through and for them to walk through. And uh, I have a feeling within a couple of years, you'll barely be able to even tell that, uh, that this has been cut because the, uh, this, the, the kind of ceanothus and other brush that's here will uh, grow up pretty quickly.